This skill puts together everything we've learned about covalent bonds and applies it to advanced molecules that may include reduced or expanded octets. In this question, we have IF3. So we're going to go ahead and draw our Lewis diagram for this molecule. So first, looking at our periodic table, we need to find iodine and fluorine. So here's iodine and here's fluorine. We can see both of those are in group 17, which according to our shortcut means both of those have seven valence electrons. So we know that iodine has seven valence electrons. And we know that fluorine also has seven valence electrons. So on our diagram, we've got one iodine and three fluorine. So that means we have one set of seven valence electrons plus three more sets of seven valence electrons. That gives us a total of 28 valence electrons. So we know we have 28 valence electrons to start with. Our next step in drawing our Lewis diagram is to draw single bonds joining up our atoms. So I'm going to add a single bond between each of the fluorines and the iodine. Three single bonds, that uses up six electrons in total. So I'm using up six valence electrons. That leaves me with 22 valence electrons remaining. My next step is to add electrons on the terminal or outer atoms until I've used up all my valence electrons. So I'm gonna start doing that. So I'm gonna add some on this fluorine to give it a full octet. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six electrons added there. I'm gonna add six more on this fluorine and six more on this fluorine. So that's six electrons added to three fluorine atoms. That's a total of 18 valence electrons used up. And that leaves me with four valence electrons remaining. Okay, so after we've done this process, whatever valence electrons remain, we're going to add them onto our central atom. So adding two more electrons gets me to a full octet. Now I have eight electrons around my iodine, but we still have two electrons to assign. And since iodine is in the lower periods, it's a larger atom, it can accommodate an expanded octet. So we're going to add an extra lone pair of electrons on our iodine to give it a total expanded octet of 10 electrons. If you need more practice drawing Lewis diagrams, go back to the previous unit, Introduction to Covalent Compounds. Our next question asks us to find the shape of this molecule. So to do that, we're going to look at how many electron domains we have. So each of these bonds is an electron domain. So that's one, two, three electron domains. Lone pairs are also electron domains. So we've got one here and one here. So that's a total of three bonds and two lone pairs, which is a total of five electron domains. So heading to our reference sheet, we have five electron domains looking in that first column. And we had two lone pairs. So that gets us to... T-shaped, which has that T-shaped molecule we can see there, with angles of slightly less than 90 degrees. So back to our question. The shape is T-shaped. The angles are slightly less than 90 degrees. And the image that shows that from our selection over here is image E. The next question asks, does this molecule have free rotation? So to answer this question, we need to look if we have single or double or triple bonds in our molecule. Our molecule only contains single bonds. There are no double or triple bonds. And single bonds are made up of sigma bonds and do not include pi bonds. Sigma bonds do allow free rotation and pi bonds don't. Since we only have sigma bonds, since it's single bonds only in this molecule, this molecule does allow free rotation. So the answer is going to be yes, because there are no pi bonds present. 
lastly, we're looking at the polarity of our molecule. So we're told the iodine has an electronegativity of 2.66 and fluorine has an electronegativity of 3.98. So we want to find the difference between those. So the difference in our electronegativities. So it'll be 3.98 minus 2.66. That gets us a difference of 1.32. Since this difference is greater than 0 0.4, that tells us that bonds between fluorine and iodine are polar bonds. So our bonds are polar in this molecule. And looking at our shape of our molecule, shown in our image E, we can see that it's not a symmetrical molecule. From the top and the bottom, it looks symmetrical. But if you look from this side, we have that lump sticking out towards us. Looking from this side, we don't have that. There's an empty space. So this is not a symmetrical molecule. And if we try and visualize how that affects the polarity, we can draw our polarity arrows onto this molecule. We know that fluorine is more, more electronegative than iodine. So that means we're going to have electronegativity arrows pointing outwards towards our fluorine atoms. And looking at our diagram here, if we draw those on, you can see that those dipole arrows pointing up and down, those ones can cancel each other out. But there's nothing left to cancel out this dipole here. So we are going to end up with a polar molecule, and it's going to have that shape of dipole on it that I've shown on the diagram. So the answer is, yes, it's a polar molecule, and the reason why is that it contains polar bonds and it is asymmetrical, meaning it's not symmetrical. So those polar bonds don't cancel each other out and we end up with a net dipole on our molecule.